Welcome everybody. We will start in just a few seconds and we'll, we'll just wait until everybody is in the room and their audio is connected. So just hang tight. All right, welcome everybody. My name is Scarlett Hiller. I'm the franchise partner of Expedia Cruises in the Windermere Twilliger location. Our travel talks are being offered by the six Expedia Cruises offices in Edmonton and, and surrounding er areas. With these talks, we want you to enjoy the destinations that we take you to. We want you to see all of the wonderful tra travel products that are out there, whether it be air, land, or or a cruise product. Also, you can create your next great travel plan or plans going forward. For those that have not attended a Zoom meeting, everyone is muted. You can choose to show us your smiling faces or not, but we hope and encourage you to leave your cameras on. We'd love to see you. If you have any questions throughout the presentation, please use the chat feature and we will either answer those via the chat feature or leave those questions until the end for both Kim and myself to answer them. For the most part, Canadians um, still haven't been given the green light to travel, but it's coming. Um, there are many, many cruise ships already sailing in the waters. And so we are getting so close. We are still hopeful that by late 2021, we Canadians can start moving again. I'm sure all of us on this call are so looking forward to that day when we can travel comfortably and safely. But I'm not gonna lie, when, it's, when we start to travel, things are going to be a little bit messy. I don't, and, I, and I don't know how else to describe it. With vaccine passports, um, PCR tests, antigen tests, masks or not masks, that's where it becomes messy. And that's why you need to use a travel advisor but more, more specifically an Expedia Cruises travel advisor. We are here to help you every step of the way. More than ever, the need for a travel advisor is so important. We will help and guide you through the messiness and we will work hard to make your next trip as safe and as seamless as possible. All of the six offices are open, so please give your travel consultant or your local office a call and set up set up an appointment to get planning your next vacation. So now it's time to start planning. Now it's time for us to get educated on some great travel ideas. And tonight we get to be educated by Kim Lucy from uh, Viking Cruises, talking about the Viking Ocean products. And one last comment, I just wanna make sure that we don't forget now that we're going to get planning and getting educated, don't forget to invite all of your friends and family to travel with you. So enjoy the presentation and welcome Kim Lucy. Thank you. Well, thank you everybody. It's really a pleasure to be able to talk to uh, people again, real people and to actually see faces on the screen. So thank you so much for taking the time out tonight. We were uh, joking a little bit at the beginning as to whether or not I was gonna be a big enough draw to overcome the leadership debate, but I hope uh, I see there are quite a few of you here and uh, I really appreciate your time. So tonight we are going to be talking about Viking Ocean. We've got uh, some really fantastic itineraries and a really fantastic product to share with you. Uh, so I wanna welcome you back to the world. My, uh, as Scarlett said, my name is Kim Lucy. I'm the Director of National Accounts for Canada and also for business development in Western Canada. I've been in the industry for well over 30 years. I started in ocean cruising a long time ago, working for a big ocean cruise line for close to 20, 20 years. Uh, I joined Viking about 12 years ago when we still had only 11 river ships. We've expanded significantly, as you'll see very soon, uh, as, I, as I start to share some of the products that we do have. We're gonna zero in tonight on ocean cruising, but if you're like me, you probably got bucket list backup. I'm anxious to sail again somewhere. And uh, I look at this map and I look at all these places that are, that are on my list 
that I still want to see. And one of the things you can do with biking is explore the world. Uh, we do it in comfort, and I'll share some of that information with you tonight. But if you've got a list like I do, we go to seven different continents, 95 countries. We uh, sail on five different oceans with our beautiful ocean ships. We sail along 20 rivers throughout the world. Uh, we even visit five great lakes with our new um, expedition ship that's going to be joining us uh, in 2022. And we can visit up to 403 ports of call. And you can do it on a world cruise if you want to in 2023 and 2024. So if you're like me, you're starting to plan ahead. And hopefully tonight, I'm going to inspire you to, uh, to make those bookings now and to think about the future and have something to look forward to. So biking has been around for quite a long time. We actually just celebrated our 24th anniversary. We started um, in Russia in 1997 with four ships sailing along the rivers of uh, Russia between St. Petersburg and Moscow. Uh, we now have 74 river ships sailing around the world. You can see those down in the lower, uh, in the lower photograph. We have um, six ocean ships currently sailing right now and eight of them that will be joining the fleet through 2022. Um, and we also are gonna be adding a couple of new um, expedition ships to our fleet, as well as a, a ship to the Mississippi in 2022 as well. These ships are all small and intimate and they're able to sit to, to dock right in the heart of the city. And I think that for me is the big, is the thing I love the most about the, the Viking ships. Not only the river ships, which you expect are small, 190 guests, they will dock right in the heart of the small towns and cities that we visit along the rivers, but our ocean ships are small as well. They're 930 guests, and they too are under 50,000 tons, allowing us to dock right in the heart of the city. And that really does give you more time in the port of call. They're all um, equipped with the latest environmental equipment and reach those high standards. We have uh, hybrid engines, we have solar panels, and we have all the latest air scrubbers that are required. Uh, a lot of our ships are also designed to have a low vibration level as well. So when we go into sensitive areas with expedition ships, we're, we know that we're not gonna disturb some of that highly sensitive uh, um, underwater scenery. So um, with us, you've got a wide world to sail. So. Tonight, we're gonna to zero in on ocean, but I want you to know that you can talk to your travel, travel consultant at Expedia and they're versed in, um, in our product and they'll be able to share with you uh, some of that information. But I wanted to just uh, answer the question because a lot of people do know us as a river cruise line, we're the, one of the largest in the world uh, with, with a large, large fleet. Um, and a lot of people wanted to know, why did we get into ocean cruising? Well, one of the main reasons was, is that a lot of our guests were coming from ocean cruising. They were coming from larger uh, ships, just like maybe many of you have been on Princess, Holland America, Celebrity, uh, Royal Caribbean, NCL. I came from NCL, so I do, uh, I do understand. And, but one of the things I fell in love with about the river cruise experience is the intimacy, the smallness, the close, the close um, contact with the locals and the immersive nature of the experience uh, and virtually all inclusive. And so that's what we were hearing from a lot of the clients that were on board those ships when we asked, you know, they were telling us ocean ships have just become too big. There's too little time in the port of call because so much of that time, these ships have become such fabulous destinations now that you almost don't need a port of call. There's climbing walls and zip lines and floating rivers and all kinds of cool stuff. Also, it's not as good value as you think when you first purchase because a lot of things are not included in the original price. Small ships are far too expensive, some of the luxury brands. Uh, and small ships, some, a lot of them were older and outdated. Now that's changing because a lot of our competitors are adding fantastic new ships just like we are. But we saw an opportunity, we saw a niche in the market to take that wonderful river cruise experience that people loved and translate it and put it on an ocean ship. So um, what I wanna talk about is who we are and what makes us different. And one of those key things is that we're very destination focused. We create experiences that are culturally enriching. Our clients are, um, they're travelers. They are interested in 
art, history, culture, music. They want to be educated. They want to be immersed in the destination. And um, that's what we create the experiences for, for all of you. And we also really take, uh, we look at your interests and build around that. So um, we launched our first ocean ship in 2015. And for the past five years, we've been recognized as the number one small ship ocean cruise line with travel and leisure. We've been recognized with Berlitz, with Cruise Critic, uh, with, uh, with a variety of uh, consumer-based um, uh, publications. So um, we feel very good about that because we, it, when you first come out of the come out of the gates, it's sometimes you're not at your absolute best, but we were able to launch and be able to continue on. Now, one of the reasons we were able to do that is that the gentleman who owns our company, who owns Viking, he was, has been in the industry for over 50 years and was one of the first of the luxury ocean cruise uh, owners. He owned a company called Royal Viking Line that used to sail around the world. And it, when he sold that company in the early two, uh, 1990s, and got into river cruising, all of that experience he still had, and he was able to bring that to this amazing product. So we're a little bit different. Uh, as I told you, we brought some of those experiences from river over to ocean. So these are some of the things we're not, and things we don't have that maybe other ships do. We don't have casinos. We're an adult-focused cruise line, so we don't have children under 18. We don't have children's programs. So we know that you love your kids, you love your grandkids, but you don't always love other people's when you're traveling. So um, a lot of our guests really enjoy that experience of being with like-minded people and being able to uh, not have uh, that distraction to be able to really um, enjoy fellow adults and share their experiences. We don't have umbrella drinks or photographers or art auctioneers on board. We include the beer, wine, and soft drinks with lunch and dinner. We don't have extra charges for alternate restaurants. Wi-Fi is complimentary. Uh, we have laundromats on each of the floors and they're uh, complimentary along with the soap and the tokens. We don't charge for anybody to go in and use the spa facilities. So you don't have to be in a separate uh, special category. You don't have to buy a service uh, and you don't have to be on a certain floor. You can go and use it at your leisure um, and all of the, the wonderful parts of it. We also, um, when you go to the spa, we also have uh, a rule that says we, no one can sell you anything while you're in that spa treatment. I don't know about you guys, but when I pay a couple of hundred dollars for a relaxing uh, massage, I don't always want to be pressured to buy whatever product uh, somebody's selling. So that's not uh, something our, our owner feels very strongly about. He says, I've got too many expensive bottles of cream and, and oil. Uh, sitting in my cupboard because I felt guilty about not buying. So we don't want people to feel that way. There are no inside staterooms, no smoking, no lines, no formal nights, no butlers. Everybody is a VIP with us and there's no nickel and diming. So the only things we don't include with biking are gratuities, which are discretionary. They are um, applied to the onboard account like most cruise lines. But we also have an, an opportunity for you to work with your travel advisor and prepay those. You don't have to worry about those in advance. And with some of the special offers um, and incentives that we have, you can use those shipboard credits towards those as well. We also don't have um, alcohol and soft drinks included between meals. They are obviously available. We do have a, a beverage package, but we also have a no corkage policy. So if you would like to bring local beer or wine on board, if you would like to uh, bring a case of wine. If you would like to bring uh, spirits, um, duty-free spirits, you're welcome. Take it on board. There are no limits. We don't search your luggage. You don't have to hide it in a water bottle, and uh, you can take it anywhere you like on the ship, and there's no corkage fees at all. The other thing not included are our optional tours. So if you would like to dig a little bit deeper into the experience, we do include a short excursion in each port of call, but if you want to take it a little bit further and explore your own interests, you can do that. Uh, we have optional tours that can be uh, added in. So we don't believe in, in um, charging everybody for everything. We know that you want to make some choices. So uh, we include most things that we know people enjoy. Now with us, you are going to get a chance to try the local cuisine. 
And this is one of the things that I've really enjoyed when I've been cruising is, is that wonderful food that's on board, but also the opportunity to try things that maybe I haven't tried before. So we always offer um, a destination focused menu. So you can choose some of the local cuisine based on the port of call that we're in. We also include a changing menu every day. So we have uh, a meat, a fish and a, a vegetarian entree, as well as a really nice selection of appetizers, et cetera. But we also have what I call comfort food or always available steak, Caesar salad, chicken and salmon. Uh, so if you need a fallback position or something doesn't appeal and you just feel like a good steak and potatoes, you can certainly do that as well. And we do have some lovely optional tour, uh, optional restaurants uh, that offer um, some lovely uh, choices for you as well. So you'll be able to enjoy those at, at no extra charge as well. But we know that people love to immerse themselves. They wanna to touch and taste and feel and experience the destination to the fullest. So as I mentioned, we do that through a variety of options. Uh, onboard shore excursion or shore excursions are included in each port of call. But we also know maybe you like me, you like to study and understand and know a little bit about your destination before you go. And that's why we do these types of presentations. But we also, once you're on board, have a variety of experiences for you. We have a resident historian that shares their knowledge about the history of the areas that we visit. We have other lecturers that talk about lifestyle um, uh, experiences that um, will teach you about the wines, um, the wine tasting, local cooking, cooking experiences, port charge, port talks, destination performances where we bring the local entertainers and musicians right on board the ship, just like we do on river. And you can um, enjoy that right in the comfort of your ship. And we also have an onboard cooking school. So if you'd like to go shopping with the chef and learn a little bit about how to prepare the local cuisine, you can do that. Now that is an optional tour experience, but it's there available for you as well. And then our, um, our lectures will teach you about the destination as we approach it and give you insight into the history, the culture, the current affairs, so that you feel very prepared when you arrive. But we also have um, our uh, personalized guest services team there that can help you set up private tours or special excursions, or if you wanna to go to a special restaurant, they can help you with that as well. Now, we know that people's interests are different. I know sometimes my husband and I don't always wanna do the same tours. So maybe you're like that. Maybe you're just interested like I am in a variety of different areas uh, when I travel. So I'm one of these people who loves to peek behind people's uh, doors. I like to peek in people's houses. I like to go to the market. I like to cook. I love to learn about how people eat and prepare their foods. So local life is something that gives us the, the chance to do that, to meet local families, to visit them in their homes, to go shopping with the chef. Working World teaches you about the economy of the areas that we visit. So if you're interested in learning about how that country ticks, we have opportunities for you to do that. And privileged access pulls back the curtain and gives you a chance to, uh, to, to actually experience things that are not always viable and are quite unique that not everybody has access to. So here are some of the examples. Um, you can go in Helsinki and uh, meet a local family and do a Finnish food tasting. Or you can go and meet a local family and, and learn about the local um, farm life uh, just outside of Oslo. Or maybe you'd like to meet a local family in Stavanger, which is uh, the, the petroleum capital of, um, of Norway. Working World will take you to a beer, uh, a brewery tour in, in, in Rostock, where we dock uh, to, to send people uh, off on their excursions to Berlin if you don't want to do that. Um, you can take a chocolate workshop or you can learn about fish farming and visit an oyster farm in Bergen. And privileged access takes you behind the scenes. As I mentioned, I had a really fun experience going in St. Petersburg behind scenes to, uh, to the uh, private offsite storage vault where um, some of the really unique treasures that were uh, and gifts that were given to the czars are kept. It's not something that anybody can get into. It's highly secure vault. And uh, it's something that we um, have access to because of our history uh, and where we started in Russia. We also, you can actually get behind uh, at the Swedish opera. So there's lots of really exciting things. And if you're more active, there's hiking, there's kayaking, there's mountain biking, there's really a lot of great experiences for you to explore.
Now, I thought I would give you a little bit of insight into our health and safety, because I know Scarlett started to talk about it. I know people are nervous about traveling. I kind of feel like I'm standing on the edge of the diving board. I kind of got my toe in the water and it's still a little cold. So I think there's probably a few of us that are out there. I'm anxious to travel again, but I want to know that it's safe. So I wanted to share what we've done. Biking has really taken it beyond what's required by the, uh, the safety, this uh, safe sale panel. Uh, we actually adhere to the CDC and WHO regulations, but we've taken them even further than that. So on board the Viking Ocean ships, and we, uh, we have actually built our own PCR testing labs. So every single one of our ships, our expedition ships as well, have their own PCR testing lab. And we, we do uh, non-invasive saliva testing every single day of both our crew and our, and our, our guests. So we know immediately if there's a positive test, but all of our guests have to be fully vaccinated before they can arrive and uh, board our ships as well. Uh, we also have installed additional air purification technology. So uh, in the rooms we have, um, we've always had open air. So uh, individual air systems, but all of, our uh, all of our ships have windows that open as well, or verandas uh, on our ocean ships. And uh, we also have infrared um, robots or uh, um, the, I can't remember what it's called. The robots that go around and sanitize, they're the same that they use in uh, many of the hospitals. We're also doing um, temperature checks every day and guests are filling out a uh, questionnaire. So we are requiring masks on board right now in, uh, the, non in the public areas, except in the lounges if you're drinking or if you have um, if you're in the dining room having a meal. But uh, we are taking everything very, very carefully. And we've, we've got all kinds of things in place for offshore. Right now, many of the destinations that we travel to, you must stay with a biking uh, tour because that's how we can guarantee that we know that the people that you're meeting and working with are, are also adhering to the standards that we set as well. So uh, we also have um, smaller groups. We've got audio, uh, audio systems for touring. And we also have um, social distancing on all of the things that we're doing. So if you'd like more information, talk to your travel consultant. We have a lot of great information. Um, sorry guys, I don't know why that's popping up. Uh, we have lots and lots of great information, including a video if you wanna walk through the ship and see the safety regulations, you're welcome to do that as well. So um, here, I'm not gonna go into great depth about the ships. I wanted to share a bit more about the itineraries, but just so you can see what they look like, they're all built with this beautiful understated elegance. We have lots and lots of windows. Everything is designed to look outward. So you have lots and lots of light coming in, big floor to ceiling windows. All of our dining rooms look out onto the, uh, out onto the ocean. And even our main dining room have, have windows that slide open to create an al fresco experience uh, with the promenade deck on the outside. We've got lots and lots of outdoor deck space as well. Elegant touches with a lot of uh, Viking history and museum of wonderful little uh, surprises uh, that, that feature art, literature, and history throughout. But ideally what we've designed it for is comfort and the ability to communicate and to engage and meet each other. Uh, you can see the conversation areas and a lot of the beautiful details that are there. Here are some of the really key, key details. These are things that you can enjoy. For example, in the bathrooms, heated floors, large showers, large square shower so you don't have to dance with the shower curtain. Easy to read toiletry bottles. Now, um, this is a funny story that um, comes from our owner. He's um, 70 something now. And he said, you know what? I have traveled a lot. I've stayed in a lot of really uh, lovely hotels. But he said, one of my biggest pet peeves is when I get into the shower and I don't have my glasses on and I'm trying to put shampoo or conditioner on, on my hair, I can't read it. It's a little tiny print. And he said, it's also really hard to open the bottles. 90% of the time I have to use my teeth. So he said, we're not doing that on our ships. So our amenities have got large, uh, they're different colors. They've got good size print and they're, they're large enough that uh, you're not gonna run out with one shower. Uh, you'll also find that there's um, lots of um, little details like the leather wrapped um, uh, railings on all the uh, staircases and teak in the tender. So no, no, nothing has been spared. And as you're walking up the stairs, you can also learn a little bit of history 
on this one, you've got the, um, the uh, Bion uh, tapestry, if you know anything about the Viking history. Our ships also have all verandas. So uh, depending on where, whatever category you choose, you're always gonna have a sitting room and a, a beautiful step out veranda. Uh, each of the categories has slightly different amenities. So talk to your travel consultant and they'll be able to explain, uh, explain those to you. But you'll find that they have lovely bathrooms. They've got, uh, they've got uh, safes, refrigerators, as well as mini bars, uh, king size beds that can be split and a lovely, um, a lovely seating area as well as a, a nice full size veranda. So let's talk about which ocean cruise is for you. Uh, many of you have probably cruised before, but maybe if you haven't, maybe I can inspire you to some new places. So just a reminder, we travel to all of these ports of call that you see. So we've got lots and lots of places to go, uh, depending on where you've been and where you haven't been and where you want to go back to. So we're going to start in Scandinavia and Northern Europe. We are Scandinavian specialists. Our owner, Mr. Tor Hagen, is from Bergen. And he is very proud of being a Norwegian and also being a Viking. And so he wanted to create a specific itinerary, a special itinerary, to share his homeland as well as the Scandinavian homelands with our guests. So this is one of our most popular itineraries. Uh, we overnight in Stockholm. That's another really great advantage we have with a small ship. We're not in a hurry. We also don't have casinos. That means we have to get out so that you can open up those casinos. We can actually give you lots of time in port, about 11 and a half hours a day. So you really get that time to explore just like you do on the rivers. So overnight in Stockholm, overnight in Bergen, overnight in St. Petersburg. Uh, the ships are small enough that we can dock right in the heart of the city as well, which means you get more time in the port of call. In Stockholm, we situate right in the middle of the old city. So you step off and you're right there in five minutes, you're in the middle of the old, old part of the city, which is fantastic. Helsinki we visit, a uh, lovely city, Tallinn, Estonia, Gdansk, Poland, which is a beautiful Hanseatic uh, city uh, known for uh, the solidarity movement, but also for a really rich history. Berlin, uh, so you can see Checkpoint Charlie and the Berlin Wall and all the history there. And then up into the Fjords of Norway, Ida Fjords, Stavanger, and then back to Bergen. Wonderful itineraries, 15 days, 11 guided tours included in eight countries. We also go into the north of Norway. So from here, we go from Bergen all the way up to Tromsø and beyond, uh, up to the Arctic Circle. Now we do this itinerary in the summer months, so you get the long days, but we also do it in the winter. Now as a, an Albertan, former Albertan, I'm not too excited about going uh, any place cold in the winter, uh, but the Northern Lights for a lot of us is, is still pretty spectacular. And there are guests who wanna do that. So this one is nice because you get um, Norway as well as part of Britain. Uh, visiting the Orkney Islands, the Shetland Islands, uh, Edinburgh, and then into London. Uh, we're also going out to Iceland, and we actually started one of our, our first sailings uh, this year is to Iceland. We're doing a circumnavigation, but this one is a lovely itinerary also offered, and it goes from Reykjavik to Bergen. It's 13 days, and we're visiting, uh, we're kind of doing a, a semi-circular tour of Iceland, and then we are also doing some stops in um, in Norway, so you get into some of those beautiful fjords uh, with the dramatic scenery. But uh, I think that waterfall is from is from Iceland. Um, and here's another one that I absolutely love: the British Isles Explorer. I've been dying to get on this one myself, but it's been so full. Uh, this one actually does it on the circumnavigation of England. So you've got London, Dover, Dublin, Wales, Liverpool. If you're interested in the Beatles, you can walk in their footsteps and even visit. Abbey Road, uh, Belfast, um, uh, Scotland, the Orkney Islands, uh, with some of the amazing, uh, uh, with some of the amazing um, uh, uh, Viking history. We've also got Edinburgh and back to Bergen. Um, and then, if you're interested, we do have this itinerary that passes, uh, brings the ship back to North America. So this one follows the the path of the Vikings. Bergen um, and across to the settlements, the original settlements of the Viking, uh, the Faroe Islands, the Shetland Islands, Iceland, Greenland, and then even Lanza Meadow in uh, Newfoundland before we arrive in Montreal. Now the Mediterranean is a place I absolutely love. I've done lots of cruising there and I've, I've done quite a bit of cruising with Viking in this area. 
What I love about it again is that the ships are small enough that we dock and, and we do travel throughout the low season as well. So it means that a lot of the tourists are gone. So when you're going to visit these, these areas, particularly some of the antiquity sites, you can get in there and really um, get to know the people and get in without the crowds. So this is a repositioning cruise that goes from Bergen, uh, stops in at Amsterdam, and then travels all around Spain, uh, a little bit of France, and uh, up to Barcelona, 15 days. So if you're interested in that, this is an itinerary that I love in the Mediterranean, overnight in Barcelona, overnight in Venice. Uh, we stop in Marseille. We stop in Florence. You've got time to go to, um, to Pisa as well as into Florence. We go to Rome, um, Naples. And then we visit some of the Croatian coast, which I found absolutely enchanting, split, and then up to Venice overnight. So uh, a fantastic itinerary. This is another one that I really enjoyed. And if you're looking to see a little bit more of Croatia and Montenegro, which um, is something that is very still untouched with an amazing amount of history, um, sailing from Venice, you stop in Kapoor, Slovenia, Zadar with its... Um, um, under, underwater organ and its old medieval city that even has um, Roman ruins and Greek ruins there. Dubrovnik, Kator, which is, um, Kator is magnificent. You sail up this fjord for about an hour and you get to this little tiny town that's about a thousand people, but it has, it's a walled city and the wall goes up over the top of the mountain and down the other side. It's the largest walled city uh, or largest wall uh, besides the uh, wall of China. It can actually be seen from space. And it's fantastic. You could hike up and take some really fantastic pictures. But it's a walled city that was destroyed by an earthquake uh, and has been rebuilt. It was actually closed. The, old, the center of the city was closed for 10 years while they restored it. Then onto Corfu, Catacalon, which is where Olympia is, Santorini, and then Athens. Uh, this one I love because it goes out to... Um, to Israel. So if you're interested, you can travel from Rome, you hit all the key cities of antiquity, um, including Rhodes for the Crusades, Limassol in Cyprus, Haifa overnight, so you can get to Jerusalem, uh, Crete, Naples, and then back to Rome. Fantastic itineraries. Um, and then we've got variations. This one is Venice to Istanbul. If you've not been to Istanbul, this one allows you to get into Troy, uh, into Ephesus, which is magnificent. Uh, and then roads and some of the other places that I mentioned as well. And we're also going to the Caribbean and the Americas. So if you want to stay a little closer to home, you can do that. We just announced some new itineraries for the fall of 2021 and into early 2022. My fingers are crossed that we're going to be able to get out of jail in Canada and be able to get out and travel. So this might be something you're interested in. This is the Hawaiian Islands leaving from Los Angeles and sailing out to Hawaii and back. Um, the ship, as you know, is safe. We've got lots and lots of space for everybody. And it's a wonderful place to just kind of sit back, relax, and enjoy uh, the tropical uh, weather. We're also doing Grand Hawaii and Polynesia. And this one actually has sold out. Uh, it's, it's, it went so fast, but it, it goes uh, out to Hawaii and then down into Marea, Bora Bora, uh, into Tahiti and back to Los Angeles. We're also doing a modified, a slightly modified um, version of our uh, West Indies Explorer. Uh, this one leaves from Fort Lauderdale and it's a 15 day cruise with nine guided tours, Fort Lauderdale, and then down to the deep Southern Caribbean. So you've got almost a port of call every day uh, and you're getting, and remember, we are all about the cultural experience. So it's not just flop and drop, it's about learning about the history of these places and getting a chance to experience some of the, the local life, the privileged access, and also the working world experiences. Panama Canal and the Pacific Coast. If you wanted to do the canal, this one is going now between Los Angeles and uh, Fort Lauderdale. So we're going all the way through the canal and back. So there's a few itineraries uh, in November and February through March on this one, 18 days, fantastic, um, a fantastic way to see this part of the world. And then we are also doing a circumnavigation of the Caribbean, so Panama Canal in Central America. I love this one because you're getting into some of the other Caribbean islands, but you're also getting a little taste of the canal as well. And then for those interested in Brazil, um, obviously these are for 2022 and beyond. 
Uh, this one, we are going to be sailing from San Juan, Puerto Rico, in through the Caribbean, and then all the way up the Amazon to Manaus. So if you're interested, uh, this is a really, uh, really unique and interesting itinerary with lots of access to some of the indigenous cultures, uh, as well as uh, you can even go piranha fishing if you want to on this one. Um, and then we're doing uh, around the Horn of South America. I love this. I did it a few years ago. And um, it's a thrill to be able to check off the horn uh, as, as being able to go around. So this is another great itinerary that we'll be offering in 2022 uh, and 2023 for those who are interested and maybe want to see um, the tropics of the northern part of Buenos Aires and Santiago, and then working your way down through the Alaska of South America, the Beagle Channel, the Beagle Straits, and the incredible um, uh, glaciers of this area. And there's a lot of interesting influence because you've got Argentina, you've got the Falkland Islands, which has that British um, uh, flavor. And then you've also got a lot of German um, influence in Chile. Uh, Portemont is a almost full German speaking town or city. And then of course, we're coming to Alaska. So uh, if you're looking forward to, uh, to seeing things a little bit differently, we do an 11 day tri trip that does a one way from Vancouver and stops in some of the smaller um, Alaskan ports like Juneau or like Sitka and uh, Valdez. So, um, uh, and not to be left out is the Eastern seaboard. So here is a fantastic trip going from Montreal to New York uh, during the fall. So you've got uh, fantastic stops in Boston, New York, uh, all the way up the, um, the St. Lawrence River. So I want to wrap up with just one last um, teaser for you. I don't know about you, but we've seen a huge, huge pickup in people wanting to kind of check off a lot of things they've missed over the last year, a uh, year and a bit. So world cruises have been extremely popular. We actually have sold out of 2021, or sorry, 2022, uh, 2023, and we've opened up our 2023, 2024 world cruises. We actually have two of them departing. And we have two different options for you. So we actually, uh, for those who want to leave from Fort Lauderdale, they can leave in December of 2023 and sail through till May of 2024. Or you can pick up the World Cruise in um, Los Angeles. But take a look at this incredible itinerary. This one is 53 days, uh, sorry, 50, 58 ports of call and, and 28 countries. It's 121 days if you leave from Los Angeles or 138 days if you leave from um, Fort Lauderdale. So if you want to escape the winter, or maybe you just want to catch up on all those milestones that you've missed, this is a fantastic experience. Uh, we almost, we, we actually added a second world cruise because the first one for 2023, 2024 is almost completely sold out. So if you'd like to uh, find out a little bit about this, talk to the, your travel consultants at Expedia. It, it works out to about $585 Canadian per person per day, everything included. Business class air, all you're on board, plus we throw in about um, a, quite a lot of extra shipper credits to cover any other expenses that you might have like laundry and uh, uh, et cetera. So uh, something to think about. I always like to put it out. It's something that's definitely on my bucket list. And I wanted to just wrap up before we, uh, before we end with just a little bit of confidence for you. We have a risk-free guarantee. It expires at the end of this month. I don't know if it's gonna be extended, but what this does is allow you to book with confidence in the future. Because you know a lot of us are like, I don't know what's gonna happen. I don't know if things are gonna change. I don't know if, I, you know, if I'm gonna, if, where I'm gonna be in 2023, for example. So this allows you to book. And if for any reason, you have to cancel. You can cancel uh, up to 14 days prior to departure. And all of the money that you've, you've um, invested in your trip will be, uh, can, can come back to you in the form of a future cruise voucher that can be, um, that is good for two years. You just have to book within that two years. You don't have to sail. Uh, so it's, it's an opportunity for you to kind of invest or protect your investment. Um, if you prefer, you can certainly uh, cancel with our standard cancellation program, and you can file a claim uh, with your insurance provider through Expedia Cruise Ship Centers. 
This does not replace insurance. I still want to make a point that insurance is highly important. And I think we've all learned that over the past, uh, past year. But this is a really great program that just allows you to make your booking knowing that if anything happens to you or the world doesn't, doesn't change, uh, you've got um, a way to, to, um, to plan again for the future. So we do have an offer uh, with Expedia and I wanna thank you all for taking the time out tonight to join me. We are offering $100 per person shipwork credit it's valid on any sailings 2021 through 2023 for, um, for our ocean bookings. But I'm also adding in river, just in case you've got a little, uh, a little hankering to go on a river cruise in the future. So uh, it's not, it doesn't apply to our Mississippi or Expedition product or Southeast Asia or Egypt, but it does apply to all of the European itineraries as well as our ocean cruises. So if, you're, uh, if this is something that you're planning for, thinking about, take advantage of these two great offers, the shipper credit, as well as the risk-free guarantee. And we do have a lot of free air right now on some of our, our, our itineraries. So please talk to your uh, Expedia Travel Consultant and they'll be able to give you more details. So I hope I've inspired you and maybe um, excited you about traveling again. I know I am certainly looking forward to it. And I hope that maybe I've added a few things to your bucket list. So I'm going to turn you back to, uh, to Scarlett and uh, I'll uh, stop sharing my screen and you can, uh, we can see all your faces. And if we've got any questions, I am more than happy to stick around and answer them. Thank you very, very much, Kim. Um, I know I've added a few destinations to my bucket list. Um, Going through a few of the questions. Thank you, Susan, for your comment. Uh, she said we've done the West Indies Explorer and South America and the Chilean uh, fjords. Both fantastic trips. The ships are wonderful. So thank you for that comment. Um, um, there was just a few questions that we wanted to go through. Um, just Kim, is there lots of availability to book and travel in 2022? There actually isn't too much. So that's another good reason to talk to Expedia and your consultant, because the one thing that um, and I should have mentioned, so thank you for bringing this up. A lot of people who didn't weren't able to travel in 2020 and even 2021, because we've had some suspensions because countries aren't open yet, they um, received a future cruise voucher and they have rebooked. So they've rebooked already for 2022 and 2023. So as I mentioned, some of our Scandinavian itineraries almost all quote sold out. Uh, we have um, some of our med cruises, particularly for the, the peak seasons are also almost sold out. So I don't wanna deter you because there are, there's stuff changing over all the time, but um, some of the longer cruises have been very, very popular. And those ones tend to be uh, a little bit more, uh, a little bit more busy. So that's the advantage of the risk-free guarantee. You can book it now. You're not at risk, even with our full payment policy. Um, you're only at risk on the majority of our cruises under 35 days. It's only $100 per person uh, penalty up to four months prior to departure. So you've got you've got flexibility and. Uh, I, I don't know about you, but I've already booked a trip for this year because I want something to look forward to. Uh, whether I'm going to be able to go or not, I don't know. But at least I know that I've got something to look forward to. And uh, I think all of us just need that, that incentive or that. Hope. Absolutely. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Great. Um, just um, one other question in regards to uh, vaccination policies. Um, I know you said that everybody, it's, everybody has to be vaccinated, fully vaccinated to be on your ships. Um, is there any guidelines as far as what type of vaccinations? Um, oh, this, I should yeah. mention that, thank you. <clears throat> um, we adhere to the WHO um, regulations, mm -hmm. except all vaccinations. We take double vaccinations, mixed, mixed vaccine, vaccinations. Uh, we take AstraZeneca. We take um, the, the, the Chinese version of AstraZeneca. So we take everything as long as you've been um, double vaccinated. Okay. 
Well, perfect. But the one thing you do have to be aware of, though, is that that's for our ships, but you have to get into the countries. So you have to be aware that what the regulations are for many of the countries. And for the most part, the European countries are taking mixed vaccines. Uh, the, um, the US right now is still uh, a bit of a challenge. I don't know what the regulations are to fly in. That's why you need a travel agent. I have to call my travel agent to find out if I can get into Hawaii. But um, you need to uh, check to see if you can fly in. A lot of them give you a 12 hour or 24 hour window. So uh, you come in and you can get on board the ship. So we've had to do that in, in Budapest because Budapest, you're, you have to quarantine, but you have a 24 hour window and we have an exemption that allows our guests to be uh, in, picked up, go to the ship and they're contained then. So um, yeah, we're, we're doing everything we can. Great. No, that's really good information. Um, for the early sailings, are you providing COVID testing that is required? Um, you have to have COVID tests to get out of the country and into the country, but we are providing COVID tests to get you home. Get you home. Okay. Yeah. Because we have our own, we're doing PCR testing on board with our lab. And yeah. at, at the end of your ocean cruise, you will receive in your room uh, a letter certifying that you, that you have been, uh, you have your PCR test, you can take it with you. And on our river ships, even though we don't have labs, we're still doing daily testing. And we are working with the same company that runs our labs on board our ocean ships. And they are doing daily PCR testing for us. They have labs all along the river. So we provide exactly the same service. There's no charge for that. There's no charge to get your PCR test to come home. Uh, you will have to get it going on and you will be, have to take a PCR test as soon as you get on board the ship. Uh, but um, we've got that pretty covered. And we have quite a few people already sailing and the, the feedback has been phenomenal, really positive. Uh, if you're on any of the Facebook groups, you'll see that there have been people posting. We have actually an ex several Expedia people on board our Bermuda sailing right now from Canada. And uh, I've seen really, really great um, comments coming back about how easy it is, that the experience isn't, um, isn't deterred by the protocols on board, that they really feel like they're still on a cruise and that they don't feel like they're um, being restricted in any way. That's fantastic and great information. Thank you very much, Kim. Um, since there are no other questions that I see, um, I want to thank you. Oh, Ian, I see you have a question. Ian, if you want to type it into the chat real quick, I will wait for you because I can't hear you. Well, I will say I have worked with Expedia, particularly the team in, in Northern Alberta uh, for many, many, many years. And you are in really, really great hands. These people, the, all of these consultants have been attending my training for the last year. They're up to date on everything that we're doing. And I know that they're working very hard to stay on top of all the protocols. So a travel agent right now is your best friend. Uh, you really, I, I don't think um, that it's, I think that they bring so much more value to the table than we realized until COVID hit. So um, I commend you all for working with this great team. I do too. Our teams are working very, very hard to make sure we're up to date and uh, the information is so fluid. So we are working very, very hard to make sure that we pass that information on to you, the customers. Um, I wanna thank you, Kim and our valued customers for attending tonight. Um, Kim, you have inspired us to add a Viking ocean cruise and a river cruise to our bucket list. Um, so thank you. Um, our next travel talk is with Emma Waterways next Thursday at seven o'clock. And she will be focusing in on um, Europe and then some last minute bookings, like hopefully for Christmas markets. 2021 and then looking into 2022 and finding out what's available and their protocols as well so hopefully you can join us next thursday um, invite your friends uh, as well the more the merrier 
Um, good night, everybody. And Ian, uh, somebody will reach out to you if you have that question because we couldn't uh, connect with you. But uh, I think, thank you everybody for joining us. Thank you everybody. Thank good you. Night.